bum bum Hey, kia ora, Helen Brahms here, coming to you live from Sun City in Arizona, where we are having a super fantastic, sparkling, winning Wednesday. I had to think, Percy. <laughs> it's been a long day, but it's been a very good day, full of lots of different celebrations. So we had my accountability call this morning, so I got to talk with my accountability coach, and we had a celebration on the goals that have been achieved this week and what we've got coming up over the next week or so. So we got to do our celebration with that. Um, after the accountability call, it was like, what was I, what did I do? Oh yeah, I thought about breakfast. I thought about breakfast. <laughs> but then I remembered that my water softener was leaking, not the actual water softener itself, the connection between the hose and the faucet was leaking. So grab the plumber's tape, put my shoes on, and Sefi's so like, oh, we're going outside. And I'm like, oh. So I put a, put a harness on, put a leash on, took her out back, threaded her leash through the um, the brackets that are on either side where the tow bar thing goes. Um, I have the tow bar thing. I just don't have the connection thing with the ball on it to go in there. But on either side, it has these D-rings that you can hook stuff up to. So threaded her leash through that. And so she was locked in there and couldn't get into too much trouble. <laughs> Emptied the tanks. Um, turned the water off, got the plumber's tape wrapped around the, the faucet, put the around the um, water regulator, put the foot, put the hose, connected the hose back on, turned everything on, crossed fingers, opened up the um, the valve that will fill up my holding tank, and um, by which stage my other tanks had emptied, so they all got closed up except the grey water one. The grey water one stays open all the time. Um, I forgot one time. Did I tell you about that? I was washing dishes and I let to, went to let the water out of the sink and it wouldn't go anywhere. And I'm like, what the heck? And I heard this gloop. I'm like, what is that? So I go and check the shower and there's water laying in the bottom of the shower. And I'm like, what? The? And then I went, damn, I forgot to leave the grey water thing open. So immediately outside, round the thing, open up the grey water tank, let it all out, come back in. The sink was empty. The shower was empty. And I was like, oh, thank goodness for that. So, um, but that was that was like a couple that was like two or three months ago. <laughs> but anyway, so we got the tanks empty today. The grey water one got reopened because I always open it before I open the black tank because I don't want water going back somehow going back up into the into the grey tank. And um, so got that empty. Remember to open up the grey tank again, and uh, started filling up the holding tank. And then I said to Zephyr, I said, "Okay, here comes the test." And we turned off the the valve for the thing and no leaks i was like yay haven't checked it since so we'll go when we leave to go for a walk we'll go and check it then but i wanted to get on here and get this done so we could go for a nice long stroll um depending how far zephy wants to walk and how much gossip she wants to sniff at i always call it gossip when they're sniffing other dogs peeing areas <laughs> So we'll check that to make sure that the seal is still holding and everything else. But awesome went on that today. So glad to get that done. Then we come back around the front and I'm like, actually, while I have the locker keys in my hand, I had a couple of, I had some bits and pieces here that had been sitting by the door for a while to put away in the lockers. And I thought, let me get that done. So um, I put Zephy on the long leash that I have outside in this, that's attached to the stake in the ground. And um opening up the first logger to pull the first thing away and one of the security guards stops out front of the driveway and goes oh can I give her a treat and Zephy's like I'm it and she's sitting there and she's tail wagging front paws go up onto the golf cart and she's like what you got for me and it, well actually no she couldn't reach the golf cart that's right because it was a because Jenny has a 15 foot leash and that was a little longer to where they were so the guy I said sure and so the guy comes out and, and she sits all pretty with her tail going like crazy she got her treat she was very happy and I got all the stuff put away that I needed to get put away into the lockers I still have more stuff to go into the lockers but I've got a um, finish up with it and repack. I have to repack some of the containers before they can go back in the lockers. Um, and uh, so I was glad to get those boxes out that I had ready to go into the lockers. And so I thought, well, hang on, she's on a tether. We're outside. It's a beautiful day. And it was a beautiful day. And I thought, I know. So I came inside and grabbed some some of her training treats and we did some training outside. Now, normally we are inside training where there is no distractions. 
excuse me, like zero distractions. We are now outside. There are rabbits. There are other dogs walking. There are people walking. There's stuff going on all over the place. And um, so I got her out there and had her walking backwards on her leg. <laughs> she was funny. Getting her to walk backwards on her legs because normally when we're in the RV, she starts walking backwards and then she curves. And I thought, okay, I need to get her walking in a straight line and she can do that down this long piece of patio that we have. So I start walking her and the next thing she's like right in front of me. <laughs> She went around. I'm walking here, holding her treat over here where she can where she can reach it. So I've got her treat over her nose and I'm walking her backwards. I'm keeping in a straight line. She comes down and around so that her back is now up against my front. And she was facing me at the, at the start of that on, to my, on my side. She's on my right side, on her hind legs, walking backwards. And she slowly just starts curving around until her back is against my front. And she keeps walking, but she has she's trying to walk backwards and I'm trying to walk forward. So she didn't put her feet down and I said, and so I gave her the treat because she'd actually done a pretty good job with walking and that. And um, but then at one point she was almost doing she was almost she was facing sideways and trying to figure out how to walk as well. It was hilarious. Um, so I had her walking. The intent was to get her walking backwards outside. She ended up walking backwards into a loop where she ended up against me. She ended, she started turning her body so she was then going sideways. <laughs> and then I was trying to get her to walk towards me with the tree. It was hilarious. And uh, but she got a few paces and I celebrated her because she she did a good job. She got some she did eventually walk in a straight line backwards, which I know she is capable of. Um, she actually did some side steps, which we haven't even learned that one yet so she got treated for that and then um i'm trying to teach her to walk forward towards me and she either does these little bunny hops like actually hops on her back legs um forward or she's slowly learning to put one foot and then the other and one foot then the other so she's slowly learning that so she got treats for all sorts of different combinations that she did today it was awesome but it was beautiful being outside and being able to do that with her and i'm sort of like and this was like all this all happened from doing the the tape on the faucet to training Zephy all happened in like a 25 minute period before I had to get on the help desk. And of course I hadn't had breakfast at this point. It's you know, between 12 30 and 11 o'clock. I haven't had breakfast at this point. And so I come inside and I look at the clock and I got five minutes before I get on the desk. So I quickly um, grab, I have the, the Wasa crack um, crisp bread. So you haven't seen them there about this long, about four inches long and about two inches wide. And they're just like flat bread, um, extra large crackers I guess you could call them but they're made in Germany um and um so I put some tuna I put hickory smoked tuna on there and the little packets of tuna can very easily be split into half on these two crackers put some cheese on there and some sliced tomato and sat down to eat and of course little miss comes and gets up next to me wanting her little bits of cheese <laughs> you can't even. and um so I'm sitting here working, eating my eating my crackers and my tuna fish and my cheese, and uh, got her next to me. Um, so it was a very interesting start to work day today. But the whole work day it was a complete celebration anyway. Um, it wasn't till like around four, I think it was, around four o'clock. I realized, hang on, it's the ninth of March. I thought I started with mailbox power on the ninth of an M month. Now was it March or was it May? And I'm sitting here thinking, thinking, huh? And so I go back through my calendar to May. Yep, no, still, you know, I was definitely, so I must be March. So I go back to March and have a look. And March 9th last year, so a year ago today, I actually started with Mailbox Power working on their help chat. So I had, so today is my one year anniversary. So I was like, that is so cool. Um, so it's been a, a day long celebration. You know, every time we, we get a win for us is we happen to solve a customer, a client's problem better than they anticipated or we go the extra mile to do something for them um give them clear instructions on how to do xyz whatever it is they want to do and when they come out and go oh thank you that worked or thanks for getting that sorted out they come to us in a panic and we help calm them down and get things sorted for them and that sort of thing as well sometimes we can't help everybody and we understand that um, some people just don't want to be helped or some people are stuck on are just stuck on a thought in their head that you just can't break them from that thought. And it doesn't matter what you say, what you do, they are stuck there until you solve that stuck. Um, and sometimes we can do it and sometimes we can't. It's just one of those things working on a help desk. I experienced that back with computers when I was working on a computer help desk many years ago with Data General. And uh, 
they were just and that was phone calls so you're getting the verbal abuse coming through instead of just the typed chat abuse um but the verbal abuse it was sort of like excuse me when you calm down i will be prepared to talk to you and prepared to listen to you and that's start going off again i go if you do not stop this verbal abuse i am going to hang up and there were some people that i hung up on and then that was about 20 30 minutes i guess it took them to calm down before they called back and apologized um and then we were able to solve their problem so um, but you know you, you can't on a help desk you can't satisfy everybody there's always going to be somebody who gets a bee in their bonnet about something and thinks they've been unfairly treated even if you've bent over backwards and sideways and done three you know triple somersaults or quadruple somersaults and all that they're still not happy it doesn't matter what you do with them then there are some people who will never be happy with the resolution to their problem um and that's just a fact of it's human nature it's just a fact of human nature so we celebrate the wins when we if we manage to solve somebody's problem and go that extra mile for some um for them and everything else or help them celebrate a victory that they tell us about um, when they come into the chat then it's a good day and there is more celebration going on than there is sort of like those people that you really don't want to deal with <laughs> but you know i'm like oh we've got this person coming through again you remember stuff that happened with them in the past it's like mm, put on a happy face put a smile on the face and just remember that no matter what happens today is always super fantastic and sparkly and then i take that attitude and i you know it doesn't matter if this person's been uh pain with us before and this is any help desk i have ever worked although i wasn't doing the super fantastic sparkling thing years ago with that in general i was just sort of like they are not going to affect my positive attitude today I am positive, you know, I was, I was in the I am's back then. And uh, so I'd say a few I am's and take a deep breath and go deal with that client. <laughs> so, but you learn different tricks on how to cope and how to, how to keep things. And just remember that it's never, any, it's not personal. That's half the, half the battle is to remember that it's not personal. They have a problem. They're coming to you to solve it. You solve it for them or do the best that you can sometimes you know we've got to wait a bit because the team has to get in there and do some programming or stuff or they've got to wait for an engineer to come out on site because you can't solve their problem over the phone for them even though you've got the basic questions to go through and um so yeah working on help desks in the customer service role is a very interesting and enlightening world <laughs> but i love it i've been now being with Marbox Power for a year today. Today is my one year anniversary. So I am celebrating that because I have got to meet some most incredible people along the way. And um, I've ha got to have the, the honor and privilege of helping a lot of people with their problems and learning more about the system. Um, and I get to work with an incredible team as well. I got an amazing team that I work with. And uh, we've all got each other's backs and all help out where we can. And if you really get stuck, there's somebody you can go to to say, please help. And they're more than willing to step in and help out. So um, those are my celebrations for today. That Zephy actually did some. And she didn't get and she didn't get sidetracked with everything that was going on around her, too. She kept, mind you, I had treats in my hands. So that was probably the main focus. Mum's got treats. Let's give her the attention. And there was one point she just kind of quickly looked to the side and then looked back to me again because I had the treats. <laughs> so, Sefi, you want to keep her attention? Have treats in your hand. <laughs> but it's been an awesome day of celebration, celebrating the wins along the way today. Um, so I'm on an energetic high, so Zephy's probably going to get an extra long walk. Although it looks like we do have to battle some wind. We had to pull the awning in because it just got a little too strong. It's meant to be around 22 miles in gusts or something today so we shall see anyway go out have a super fantastic sparkling rest of your winning wednesday and we will catch you back here bright and early tomorrow morning for thankful thursday hey konara